Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, gorgeous, beautiful souls, and welcome back to the Manifestation Bay podcast. I'm actually live streaming this one at the exact same time, so if there's this awkward delay where I'm trying to pin my con- comment, there we go, I got it. Um, all right, so how are you guys doing today? Sorry, a little rusty today. I had quite an exciting morning, mainly because I am feeling so much better, you guys. Um, Today's episode is obviously a really good one just because it's a story that I can't believe I never actually shared in detail with you before. It's a story, again, just like the one where I shared how I manifested my husband. It's one that I talk about quite often with my friends, with my entrepreneurial friends and my mastermind and people who I hang out with. They know this story really well because it is a reminder for them of how things can really freaking go your way the moment that you decide to go for it and make a decision and take a risk and do something insane for once in your life to be able to get those insane level, that insane level of results that I know you're looking for. So this episode is titled very appropriately, hashtag that one time, I invested 170K into myself in 48 hours and how it paid off. You guys, this is a 100% true story that I'm so excited to share with you. That's why I'm live streaming it live as well, because I believe that I tell the best stories when there's people watching me rather than me just sitting here alone next to my diffuser and my coffee, just recording a podcast, looking outside my window. I feel like at least there's some sort of engagement and energy that I'm getting in return. In the meantime, instead of waiting until the episode's over to be like, all right, did they like it? Did they not like it? Was this interesting? Was this not interesting? Um, et cetera. Etc. So before I begin, I know that I hosted a challenge last week from Monday to Friday that didn't make its way to the podcast just because you can find it on my Instagram. If you're not yet following me, it's at Manifestation Babe. If you go to my IGTV up until this Friday, I'm going to keep the recordings up. And on there, I talk about my surgery and how it went. And the fact that I started my um, challenge on day six of post op which is crazy for some people, but I actually felt amazing. And every single day I've been feeling better and better and better. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I recently, about 13 days ago now, went through an operation to remove my breast implants because I strongly believe that they were causing me to feel all of these crazy symptoms that I've never had before, never experienced until about three years into having breast implants inside of my body. And the effects afterwards, after surgery, and just how I feel, you guys, has been absolutely amazing. It's been blowing my mind. I've been waking up every single morning feeling so clear-headed, having so much clarity. I no longer feel uh, hungover. Um, I no longer have heart palpitations. I no longer have to struggle to take a deep breath in. Um, My eyes look clearer than they've ever looked before. And I just feel really good. I'm no longer tired anymore no longer constantly tired. Um, I know I recorded a podcast before, so if you haven't yet listened to it, go ahead and listen to it to discover and listen to how I came about to making a decision 
you know, how did I figure it out? What did I feel? Which surgeon did I go with, et cetera, et cetera, all these questions that I get. And then soon, this is not the episode, of course, I'll be recording an episode sharing the after effects. I think I'm waiting just, you know, a few more weeks at least to where I'm healed. Um, you know, at least like my body wise, my body's still really, really sore and I feel all kinds of weird twitches and nerve pains and just like things are just regrowing and healing. Um, and I want to wait just a little bit to detox and just really share with you, you know, how do things improve? And also since I'll be taking out my copper IUD, which I also believe is contributing to copper toxicity within my body, also creating similar symptoms to my breast implants. I want to share with you what happens when both objects are out of my body. Um, so that episode is coming, but for those of you who've been asking and being super supportive, I'm so grateful for all of your kind words. I'm so grateful for all of you following my journey. And yes, I am feeling amazing amazing. So if this is something that's ever been on your mind, ever been something that you are asking yourself, you know, like I'm feeling all these symptoms. I have breast implants. Could they be correlated? I urge you to do your research. I'm not going to tell you that that's going to be the answer. I'm not a doctor, not a nutritionist, not a, any kind of healthcare specialist, but I, I urge you to do your own research. I urge you to look at people's before and afters, read their stories, um, look up the hashtag breast implant illness and just dive into that world and maybe make the same decision that I made for myself. All right. All right. Instagram. How are you guys doing? <laughs> okay. So let's get into the story. I can't believe I haven't yet told this story yet. And it's mainly because do you ever feel like, have you ever lived through something and no matter how big or extreme or life-changing it was, you lived through it. And so you didn't think it was as big of a deal as it actually was. And when you tell the story to someone else, their mouths are really literally wide open. Their eyes are wide open. They're like, are you effing kidding me? How did you do that? And all of a sudden they're so interested in hearing the whole story. So this happens every time I tell this story. And to me, it honestly now feels like no big deal. It feels like something so normal. I normalized taking risks. Risks. I normalize making big decisions like this. I normalize investing in myself, but I recognize that not everyone has and not everyone has experienced this yet on this caliber. And maybe if you are experiencing it or have experienced it, you can relate to my story or maybe the story was meant to be told so that you can have complete trust and complete faith in your decision and know that you're on the right path and know that your success is inevitable. Okay. So let me just dive in because I don't have that much time, unfortunately. I have another uh, uh, appointment with my plastic surgeon today to do another check-in, and I'm like cramming this into a one-hour segment. So I am hoping this takes no longer than an hour. So if I talk a little bit fast and skip a couple details, just know that I'm really focusing on my main points here. So if something doesn't make sense, just know that I probably missed something in my notes and just carried on. And I just want you to really get like what actually happened, and most importantly, what happened afterwards. And even more importantly than that, what happened up until this point and how can you apply the exact same lessons that I learned in your life journey, whether it's your business journey, your health journey, or your relationship journey, your money journey, whatever it is, this is totally applicable to you. Okay, so in 2017, right? End of 2017. I'm going to take you guys back to December of 2017. I just finished my very first big financial year in business. To give you some reference, I went from a total of $9,000 in 2016 in my business when I started. I worked 18 hour days every single day, put all of my effort, all of my hard work, all of my mindset into my business and only made $9,000, right? Most people would give up, but I just had this inner knowing that I will not give up because there is gold around the corner. I have a breakthrough coming for me around the corner, and that's exactly what happened in 2017. In 2017, my business exploded, similar to the fact that, you know, when I share my Tony Robbins, my initial Tony Robbins investment of $15,000 that you guys are so familiar with right now. And if you're not, I honestly share it like almost every podcast episode. So just go back, go back somewhere in the timeline. You will find it. It is the initial story of how I went from living a life that was for everyone else but myself to living a life for myself and the journey that that took me on and how it led me to create Manifestation Babe. 
And so, you know, around this time in my life, like I just blew up and come December of 2017, I didn't think that I would ever have to make a decision like that again. I didn't think I would ever have to up level like that again. I did not think that I would ever need to take another big risk like that. The one that I took, which looking back now, it's like, I really had nothing to lose back then. But with this decision that I made, I really did have a lot to lose, which is um, obviously an illusion. I don't believe in loss because that's like a belief in lack mindset, a belief in lack, a belief in scarcity. I think that there is nothing ever really to lose. There's actually something always to gain, even if you lose something in the process. So it's not actually a loss. And it's an illusion, but when you're going through something, it's like, it doesn't matter what you say, right? That's what you're going to believe. That's what it seems like. It feels so real. It feels like crystal clear reality. um, And you don't see through to the other side. So in 2017, I made 600K and I thought I was balling, right? I thought life was amazing. I was balling. Things are great. But at the same time, towards this period, towards December of 2017, I felt a little stagnant. I noticed that my revenue was not increasing. I noticed that I was making about the same amount of money no matter what I did, no matter what I launched, no matter how many hours I put into my business, something stagnated to where I was making the same amount of money every single month with December being the lowest point, right? Not of that year because when I started, it started as a 7K month. So I never went down to 7K, but from the peaks that I had, Going from April to about August, September, December was the lowest. Um, I also noticed that my team around this time was totally underperforming and just wasn't up to par with what I needed to go to the next level. And I had goals to create a million dollar year the next year. And I kept asking the universe for signs and signals and any kind of help and any kind of insight that I would need to be able to scale my business to the million dollar mark the next year, which meant doubling my revenue. And so when I saw that my team was underperforming and really not the right kind of people to be on my team to begin with, um, I just didn't know that until obviously I experienced running a business with them, right? You don't ever know until you've experienced it. And so I just noticed that they were underperforming, um, revenue was stagnating and yet, I had this goal and I had no idea how to accomplish this goal. I had to figure out how to double my revenue the following year because this is just something that I chose. This is something that I put on my vision board. It was for me. It was for me to show myself what was possible. And I was really, really excited about it. Okay. I'm already digging into the story of what went down and I'm trying to go according to my notes, but once I get into flow, I swear the notes just go out the window, but it's so important for me to share every little point I made here because I want you to know like exactly what happened and how it ties together. I have it over here in my notes. So for reference, I want to share with you, you know, the point of this podcast is to share with you how I invested $170,000 into myself in 48 hours and the emotions that ran through my brain that day and the the fear that ran through my veins and how I was shaking and how I was still able to do it and the beliefs that contributed to it and the knowing that contributed to it and why I actually went through it and what happened um, on the other side. But before I dive into the nitty gritty of the story and kind of where I was at when I made this decision, I wanted to give you some reference first. So number one, I may have made $600,000 and I may have felt like a baller at this time, but I also reinvested a lot of it into my business. And that's something that I've been doing consistently over and over and over again. And if you find any other successful person out there that you're looking up to that is living life on a grander scale, you will learn if you dig in that a lot of their money that they've made initially, they have not spent it on the house. They have not spent it on a car. They have not went out there and bought themselves a brand new wardrobe. They instead reinvested it back into the business. And uh, that's something that I did because I wanted this business to grow. I wanted to feed this baby that was growing very, very fast. And if I were to starve the baby and feed myself instead, well, that's a little selfish, right? The baby ain't going to grow. I might grow, but the baby ain't going to grow. And the baby was one of my vehicles behind my growth and success at that time. So I maybe profited in 2017 around 200K, right? So this is like total cash that I had in my bank account by the end of the year, which was still amazing for me. But for scale, right, for scale, I want to share this with you. 
Um, because obviously, you know, my initial investment in Tony Robbins, when I made the 15 K investment, I had a thousand dollars, not even to my name and a credit card that maxed out at a thousand dollars. So, um, that was a whole nother journey. And although I've already made a ton of money and for, you know, for some of you might be like, well, Catherine, that's a ton of money, blah, 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 blah. This isn't that interesting of a story anymore, but I want to share with you why it is right. So 170 K was in my savings for taxes, you guys, which means untouchable money because I got to pay it to the government. Um, and I had some in my checking, of course, because I got to live until, you know, tax time when I pay up that money. And also I had some sort of expectation that I would make money in 2018 and things would balance out, right? Things were not, I didn't have like a stable foundation, but I just trusted that things would somehow balance themselves out, even though I didn't have actual proof that it would, because again, I was unhappy with my team. I didn't know what to do with that. I knew something had to change. And I also saw my income started going down rather than up. This is obviously before I started investing my money into the market, et cetera. And in this podcast, you know, the title, you're looking at the title, I probably clicked on it because of the title and it sounds so crazy to you. But one of my top values is integrity. And that's the top value of my team for Manifestation Babe is to always be in integrity with yourself and others. I hold integrity to the highest standard in my own life. And I make sure that everything I ever tell you, everything I ever post online, every number I ever share with you, anything I ever say to you, you can trust me because I am always in integrity with what actually happened. So although the title says 170K, I do want to share that 170K didn't actually leave my bank account at once um, in two days. But I signed a contract, I made a massive down payment, and I was committed to 170K investment within a 48-hour period. And this is still a large amount of money because the actual withdrawal was 70K in 48 hours, and this is still so big for me at this time, especially since I just dipped into my freaking tax account, right, that I wasn't supposed to touch. And I also, I think it's important to note and something for you to understand uh, money mindset wise is that I treat my money as um, anytime I, I treat all of my credit cards as debit cards. So I'm never actually in debt ever. Like I, as soon as I swipe my card, I figure out how to pay it within 48 hours. I'm constantly making payments. I treat everything like a debit card. If I make an investment in something, I make sure the money's in my bank and I do not touch it and I consider it as if it's not actually there, right? So I would consider it at that time that I don't actually have 170K to spend, nor do I have money for taxes now, right? So it was just this big, big, big thing. But I'll get into the details of what this 170K had to do with and of course the story, but I felt it's so important to share with you and to be in integrity that I didn't actually wipe out my whole bank account, although in a way I did. Right. And still 70K in two swipes um, for two investments that were completely intangible. You guys, it's not like I went to buy a house or something that I could physically see. It was something um, that had to do with investing in my mindset. And a lot of you have so much fear around investing in your mindset because it's not tangible. There's no tangible like input versus output. It is so invisible. And so many of you are so afraid of making that invisible investment, not understanding that the invisible investment is what creates a limitless mind. And when you create a limitless mind, you create a limitless life, you create a limitless bank account. And this is something that I had to learn from experience. And I'm so grateful that I learned this early on, but this is like this, what I'm talking about on a much, much grander scale. So this is the story of how I did what all of you know is the initial 15K investment, except on a grander scale, right? So the second time was much scarier than the first. And I want to share why. And I think it's so important to share why. Number one is, first of all, I couldn't believe I did it again. (laughs) I really never thought that I would ever find myself in another situation where I go from working all year long and manifesting all year long and really putting all of my efforts, all of my heart, my soul, outpouring of myself to just clear it completely by the end of the year. I thought that in 2015, when I started my business, um, well, it led to me starting my business, but I thought that that investment that I made in 2015 was the only risk I'll ever take. 
right? The only risk I'll ever take and it never has to happen again, which is so funny because every time you want to up level, you guys, you got to take some sort of a risk. There's got to be some sort of commitment that leads you to big results. Um, my friend James Wedmore, Wedmore posted a post the other day on um, Instagram that I shared that I love. I don't remember it exactly, but the idea is that if you make a, if you make a little commitment, don't expect big results to come out of it right? Just there's, it doesn't make sense. Input versus output. It just doesn't make sense. You need to make a big commitment to expect big results. Also, all of a sudden, you guys, I had something to lose, right? All successful people come with, this is something that most people don't realize, but when you finally become successful, a new limiting belief pops into your mind. And I see this with all of my higher level clients. I see this with all of my students who are making multiple six figures a year for the first time in their life, or perhaps creating a seven figure year for the first time in their life. They all realize that at first they were afraid of failure. And now they're afraid of losing everything. At first they're afraid of success. And now they're afraid of losing success, which goes to show you that you will always have a limiting belief. Limiting beliefs do not go away. I see so many people put way too much focus and way too much effort and way too much time into ensuring that they're completely cleared of all their limiting beliefs and they spend hours a day just working on their limiting beliefs, not recognizing that first of all, they'll never go away. And second of all, you don't need to keep focusing on them because you're actually going to attract more and more and more of them the more that you spend time focusing on them. Now, does that mean that you ignore your limiting beliefs? Absolutely not. It just means that you need to start focusing on how you're going to move forward rather than what's holding you back. But I also want to normalize this process and share with you that I'm sure Oprah still has limiting beliefs. I'm sure that Tony Robbins still has limiting beliefs. They do not go away. And this also goes for imposter syndrome. In fact, imposter syndrome gets worse the more successful you become. Huh? How about that one, right? You do not want to hear that, but I want to be honest, transparent, vulnerable, and truthful with you at all times and share with you exactly what goes on on each stage of success. Because I know that all of you know to your core that you're meant for more. And all of you know that one day, if not right now, very soon, at some point in your future, you will also become a self-made millionaire. You will also be able to buy everything that you want. You'll also be able to start a business or create a business or upscale your business or um, do whatever it is that's on your vision board. Like we're all meant for this. And I know that if you're following me, it means that you know that there's something more out there for you and you've barely, barely scratched the surface, right? So that's why it's so important for me to share all these things with you is for you to understand that everything you're going through is completely normal. And even I feel crazy sometimes And then I have to remind myself by watching my more successful friends and being like, all right, they're going through it too. It's completely part of the process. Um, I was also way more visible at this time. And a lot of people have fear of visibility because they feel like the more visible they become and the more followers that they attain and the more of an audience, the more their audience grows means that they, uh, that means that more people are going to watch for them to fail. All right. And that holds a lot of people back. Maybe you're familiar with this. Maybe you're experiencing your Instagram following growing or more podcast downloads or whatever it is that you are growing and showing up in front of more people. You also recognize that that fear starts to come in. And I was more visible at the end of 2017 than I ever was in 2015. In fact, in 2015, there's no such thing as manifestation, babe. So at that point, even though it was a little crazier of a decision to go from nothing to even less, right, to go into debt, no one was watching me. No one would ever know that, you know, Catherine Zinkina failed or Catherine Zinkina can't figure something out or et cetera, et cetera. And not that I care at this point. Like, I honestly just don't care. I'm willing to share my mistakes um, with you and share with you what I'm going through. And it's part of how I run things here at Manifestation Babe. But at that time, I was like, oh my God, like people are going to know. What if I fall flat on my face? Everyone's going to see it. So that, of course, gave me a minute, uh, not even a mini, a major panic attack. Um, I also watched a year of profit, right? And it's not even profit because it was all going to taxes anyway. Go poof in 48 hours from two yeses. Two times that I said yes to my future. I watched 170K poof out of my bank account in 48 hours. 
So now I'm going to get into the story of what went down, what decisions I made, why I made them, and where I am after it. Because it's really been only about a year and three months since I made this crazy decision. And I want to share with you that if there's a decision on your heart and you're so afraid of saying yes, even though you know you're supposed to say yes to it, you know your soul is calling you to say yes to it, I want to show you that everything is going to be okay at the end. Everything is going to go your way. Your success is already inevitable, but you need to say yes first. Okay. So 2017, I go to date with destiny in Florida, me and Brennan and a bunch of my friends fly to another, yeah, another Tony Robbins event. The first time I've ever been to date with destiny, which is the event that I paid for in 2015 that I finally got to go to. And I was so excited, but at the same time, I knew it's like my intuition knew that there's going to be something going on, right? Something, something needs to change. Something's going to happen. This is going to be a monumental time in my life. And I could feel it because of how much resistance I had to walking into the front door. I was excited, but I was scared and I could not figure out where these fears and worries and limiting beliefs were coming from. I was like, I'm just going to an event for six days to sit my butt in a chair and occasionally dance around and occasionally jump up and down. If you if you've ever been to a Tony event, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It gets crazy in there. But I was like, what, what, why am I treating this like I'm about to work, you know, really hard in my life? Like what's going on here? And as I shared before, I felt like something needed to change in my business. I was feeling burnt out. My team was underperforming. Revenue started going down. And yet I was working harder than ever. This is my hustle and grind stage for real. 2017, I hustled and I grinded my way through. I sprinkled in manifestation, but it wasn't like 2018 and 2019 where I am manifesting my way through with the occasional sprinkle of hard work and hustle because sometimes you need that balance and it's okay to bring in that masculine energy to really push you through as long as the majority of time you're open and ready to receive and you actually have space for miracles. But at this time in my life, it was completely the opposite and I was so burnt out Um you know, money started to stagnate. I was confused. I said that a million times. And here's, here's where it starts. Maybe a week leading up to date with destiny, I asked the universe for a sign. I asked the universe for answers. I asked the universe and you guys, I talk to the universe like it's my BFF. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, Catherine, how do you ask for things from the universe? What's the, what's the best way to do it? Blah, 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 blah. And yes, I have my formulas of the most effective way to do it energetically, but sometimes I talk to the universe like it's my homie. Like, I'm just like, hey, just so you know, I'm struggling with this. I really need your help. Can you please send me a sign? Can you please send me something? I really need help. Um, it's very, very casual, right? And that's the cool thing is that you can have conversations with your intuition, with the universe, with your subconscious mind in a way that's as casual with your friends, which means that if you're not doing it, why aren't you doing it, right? So I asked the universe for a sign. I walk through the doors of date with destiny. I remember the door is open and I just get slapped in the face. Not literally, but universe slapped me in the face. And it was a direct slap from my intuition where I just had this feeling, this inner knowing that it was game over. It was game over. The ball was in my court. And I wrote this down here in my notes because this is exactly what I heard. And I didn't want to paraphrase it. I want to tell you verbatim by verbatim exactly what I heard from my intuition walking in through the doors of Date with Destiny. Uh, my intuition, which comes through a voice in my head, it's just a knowing that it's the voice of my intuition. People ask me all the time, like, I don't get what you're hearing. I don't hear anything. And it's not like you hear a man's voice or a woman's voice. It's just like it's your own voice with uh, an extra, um, with this like feeling. I can't even describe it. It's like a feeling or a nudge or this knowing that it's a voice, the voice of your intuition. And so it said, Catherine, you will let go of your team when you get home. It's also time for you to seek other ways to grow your business. Trust the process, but don't expect it to be easy. And the moment I heard that, my heart sank. I remember walking to my seat, A Date with Destiny, with just a sunken heart being like, oh my God, you couldn't have waited until the last day to tell me this because now the event that I've been looking forward to my entire year 
I got to now think about how I'm going to go home and how I'm going to fire my team. Great. Thank you. Right. And what change are you talking about with my business? Like, what am I going to change? Right. There's nothing that I want to change in the, in the sense that there's no program that I want to change. There's no way of marketing that I want to change. Like, what are you talking about? But right after that thought process, as I sat down in my seat, I remembered that I received an email that morning. And the email was actually an acceptance to a mastermind that I've been applying to. I applied twice all year long. So I think from April of 2017, all, and then I applied again in December of 2017, a few days before I received the email. And I got an email that morning, I remember, and I didn't act on it yet. But the moment that that process through my head, I was like, oh my God, this is what it's referring to. Here's step one of the process. And it was a mastermind that of course involved a significant investment and I had to pay it all up front in full. There was no payment plan option and I knew I had to say yes to it. So right then and there, as I walk in through the event, wearing my hoodie and like every, all of my, if you've ever been to a Tony event, it's so cold in there. You have to like bundle up and bring a scarf and bring like gloves and bring a jacket. And I just remember bundling myself up, waiting for people to take their seats. I pulled out my credit card and I immediately sent in the money for this uh, mastermind. And I knew that this mastermind would give me that edge in 2018 that I was looking for. And the moment that I said yes to it, the moment I send over money, which was a significant portion, I don't want to share with you yet, you know, exactly the, uh, the percentages and exactly what costs what, because I know that with this mastermind, the price of the mastermind isn't something public. And I want to respect this person with their price, um, and how they share their own information. And I don't want to do it for them, but, um, I made that investment. Right. And this is hard for me. The entire, the t- entire six days was so hard for me because I felt like I was going through a soul massage. Hey, gorgeous soul. Did you know that I have a four-week academy where I teach you how to harness the universe's most powerful 12 laws to attract anything and everything you want in your life? It's called Manifestation Babe Academy, and I launch it once a year. In fact, we are heading into our one and only launch of 2019. If you feel like you're missing out on that next level, whether it is the abundance of your dreams, taking your business to multiple six figures, or manifesting the partner you know is out there, well then, this message is just for you. Since you're ready to master your power using manifestation, head over to manifestationbabeacademy.com right now and get yourself signed up. This course is my no fluff no bullshit, no excuses approach to manifesting the life of your wildest dreams. Everything I teach in this four-week course is exactly what I've used to become a self-made millionaire in less than two years. Enrollment closes in just a few days and the Academy will not open again until next year. You guys, that's 2020. So take this as your opportunity to radically change your life and step into the most successful version of yourself right now because you deserve it. Again, head over to manifestationbabeacademy.com to get signed up before we close in just a few days. I will see you inside. And now on to today's episode. Have you ever felt like you're just being ringed out by the universe and just pulled in every direction and you're just like, ah, like help me over here. And you just like, you feel like your soul is going through the ringer. It's exactly what I felt every single day. And I can't tell you how many times per day, every single day I would cry because I felt like the old version of me was dying. I felt like the ego was dying. I felt like I was literally letting go of my old life and about to sacrifice everything in order to step into the life that I've always wanted. And when you're doing this, you guys, you don't ever really have certainty. So speaking, you know, a year and three months, um, you know, after the fact, I can look back and be like, well, duh, the transition is you let go of your old life and you step into your new one. But when you're actually going through it, you don't have any proof of the new life coming about. All you are in and what you see and the box that's over your head is that you are letting go of your old life. And I went through so much uncertainty in those six days, especially since the whole time, besides, of course, amazing content, changed my life, 
freaking amazing. Date with Destiny is unbelievable. I'm going again this year. I actually opted out of the May uh, one in Australia. Um, we're not going to Australia anymore, but it's because I want to heal properly from my surgery. So things, of course, changed here and there. Um, but I'll be going back in December. So if you're going this December, say hi to me. Um, I want to meet you there. And I want to know who's going. So the whole six days, I was just planning. How am I going to let go of my team? What am I going to say? Who am I going to replace it with? Do, should I put up an ad right now? Should I not? Da, 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 da. And the whole time my intuition kept saying, Catherine, don't think about it. It's all going to fall into place. You just need to let go of them and everything else is going to come into place. So I was like, okay. And at the same time, I felt like there were still more shifts yet to happen. And it freaked me out. So two days later, after, let's say it's day three, I believe, of the event, they pitch Platinum Partnership. And they do this at most of the higher level events, like Life and Wealth Mastery, uh, Date with Destiny, um, and uh, I think Business Mastery. There was a pitch to join Platinum Partnership. And Platinum Partnership was something I wanted to do really, really badly for the longest time. Ever since I found out about Tony Robbins, I put Platinum Partnership on my vision board, on my desires list. I was like, yes, let's go for it. And in October of 2017, I went to Life and Wealth Mastery by myself without Brennan, and I was literally about to join Platinum Partnership. I wanted to sign up so bad. I was like, I don't care. We'll figure it out. We have the money right now because at the time that we, we actually did before we made other investments, but for some reason, Brennan was like, no, you know, I'm not ready. We're not ready for that kind of investment. And he asked me to wait. In fact, he begged me to wait. And the biggest uh, reason why was actually because he was planning his proposal to me. And he felt that if I made that commitment right now and there was some event that I wanted to go to, it can get in the way of his proposal, et cetera, et cetera, which makes sense. But it also came from a fear of not having enough money, which is always the fear that comes right before we make we say the big yes to that big investment that we make. And so two days later, in the middle of the Platinum Partnership pitch, Brennan texts me and says, I need to talk to you in the hallway right now. And I remember being like, great. Here he conveniently chose this time because he wants to distract me, make sure I don't bring up Platinum Partnership because we can't do it. We just joined this mastermind. We're about to let go of our team, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, fine. What do you want to talk about? And he literally <laughs> pulls me to the back room. He walks me to the back room and says, we're going to sign up right now. This is how we're going to make our million dollar year next year. And my heart immediately started pounding. And I looked at Brennan and I said, I'm about to let go of my entire team. I just pulled out X amount of dollars out of our savings account. Are you effing serious right now? Because if you know the cost of Platinum Partnership, you know where I'm going with this. I was like, are you effing serious? And the fact that Brennan said it was so mind blowing to me. It was such a synchronicity that I couldn't ignore because Brennan, of all people at this time, he wasn't really where he's at today. Today, he is such an integral part of Manifestation Babe. He really helps me run the company. He works so close together with her integrator. Um, I mean, Brennan has become the bread and butter of Manifestation Babe. I know you guys see me at the forefront. You see my face. But if you only knew how much Brennan commits to you guys and helps me brainstorm and a lot of ideas that I get really come from Brennan and they're just amazing. And he's such a big part of NB. But back then he was just he just quit his job and he was just learning to step into it. And he was not really at the mindset level that we are at together. Together right now. So the fact that he said that I knew was a sign because he would never pull a Catherine move, right? He would never take a risk like that. And so when I looked at him perplexed, I knew it had to happen. And my heart started to pound. I started to shake. I never felt so much uncertainty in my life. And I knew that if I would say, and this is just a pure experience that I had up until that point. When you say no to your intuition, you shut it down. When you say no to your intuition, 
you actually kind of delay, you screw something up in this divine process, not because you're being punished, but because now the universe has to reorganize everything that you just did, everything that you just said no to, and will find a way for you to learn the lesson again, but it will do it louder and not necessarily in a, on a positive note, at least from the human way of perceiving it, it's not going to come out positive. So I know that in order to keep the ball rolling in my success and keep up leveling, I have to say yes. Like when the universe calls, I have to do it. I have to say yes. When my intuition says something, it's like, I just don't say no anymore because I know what happens when I don't follow it. And so I, I remember walking outside and calling my bank because I knew that I just maxed out one credit card. And at this time in my life, I think like my biggest credit card was 18K limit. And now is a completely different story. Um, but at that time it was like, oh my God, like I can't just use it. I can't just swipe a credit card. I have to do a debit card transaction, which means I got to transfer money, which means I got to call the bank. And I knew I had to sign up on the spot. So I remember standing outside for an hour connecting with my bank and convincing them to allow, you know, a 70 grand transaction to go through. And they're like, what the frick are you buying, right? Like my limit was maybe 5,000. And I kept saying, you know, I need 70 grand to go through my bank account in the next five minutes. And they're like, okay, all right. And after talking to enough people and talking to their supervisor and their manager and explaining what I'm doing, which no one freaking gets this. Like you're doing what at an event? Where are you? Who is this? What's, who's the merchant? Et cetera, et cetera. And it wasn't just signing up myself. I was also signing up Brennan. So it was actually two transactions and I had to like perfectly like figure this out. And I remember finally I got the, the go, the go for it. And they said, it has to, you have to do it within the next 10 minutes or you have to call back and we have to, or, or something like that. Um, I just remember I had to go do it right now. And I remember coming back and it was like the same flashback. The same flashback to 2015 where I'm handing over a credit card shaking with this paper, my signature on it and being like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but for some reason I feel like it's the right decision. <laughs> it was like exactly the same emotions, the same feelings, the same thoughts, except on a much more elevated level on a much more amplified level. You know, when I share with you, money doesn't change you, it just amplifies who you already are. It's exactly the same thing. The more successful you become, everything just becomes amplified. Nothing about you changes. You are the exact same person. It's just that you're amplified. Everything you feel is a little more amplified. It feels more up-leveled. You, you still have problems. You just have up-leveled problems. You have different problems. You have different challenges. You have different opportunities. Nothing in this life really changes just because you have money in your bank account and you're successful and whatever. You are still going to learn lessons in your life. You're still going to get go through challenges. You're still going to go through up-levels, but it's just that they get better, right? I don't call... I. I with my positive mindset, I always call them better. The better it gets, the better it gets, the best is yet to come. And the reward just keeps getting better and better and better and better. So I did it. And in a total of six days, so by the time I got home from Date With Destiny, I went from walking into Date With Destiny to leaving Date With Destiny, having no, I went from having a full team with money in my bank account to nothing. <laughs> no team, no money to spend and figuring out how the F I'm going to make it back and how the F I'm going to double my income in 2018 to still reach my goals. Because at this time, you guys, there was no certainty whatsoever. Zero, no proof, no certainty. So how did I do it? Right. I felt like in this moment I was starting over again. And I felt like in this moment, I went back to ground zero. And in a way that scared me way more than anything was like, how am I going to start over? That just sucks. And then at the same time, I had to remind myself, well, no, Catherine, you chose to start over. This is your decision, but it's the right decision. And so how was I able to do it? I want to talk about the mindset. I want to talk about the thought process. I want to talk about how I had to trust in order to let go of that much certainty in my life at this point, of that much certainty in my business to get to where I am today. 
How exactly did it pay off? I want to share with you the deets of what happened the following year, because again, this is December of 2017, and then where I was on the other side of now, you know, obviously it's a month, um, a year and like four months, let's say. But what happened in 2018? I really just want to talk about 2018. And then what happened next? So first and foremost, how I was able to do it was my beliefs. And this just comes back to everything in manifestation, right? Everything in success has to do with your beliefs. And beliefs are a choice. The beliefs that you, someone gave to you, like for instance, your parents, well-meaning adults, teachers, um, people from your childhood, you know, when you grow up, a lot of your beliefs are someone else's beliefs. And most people don't have awareness of that. And they just think that it's, it's like, cold, hard truth. It's like rocks in the subconscious mind. Nothing can change. This is the way the world is. But I believe that it's a choice for you to hold on to those beliefs. And the moment you're aware of this, it's your choice, whether you believe something or don't believe something, whether you choose to believe something or don't believe something. And it's your choice, whether you want to work on it and ingrain it into your subconscious mind. And it's your choice, whether you want to use that to change your life. And so I chose to work really hard on this belief. And my belief is in abundance, right? The fact that the universe is so abundant, every resource except for time, unfortunately, is limitless and abundant and renewable. And I am limitless, abundant, and I have so many ideas and so many ways that I'll be able to manifest anything that ever leaves my life back into my life plus more. Also, many, many beliefs and so much mindset work that led me to having complete faith and trust in the up-leveling process. I've been working harder on my mindset and my thought process and what triggers me and doesn't trigger me and how I overcome things and how I think about things and how I reframe things. I've been working on that part of my life, my brain, my mind, harder than anything I've ever worked on in my life up until this point. And that work allowed me to have complete trust and faith in myself and complete faith and trust in the universe. I've developed my spirituality a lot up until that point and still even further up until today. And I just hardcore choose to believe that everything is always happening for me. My success is inevitable. I'm always on the right path and I will never be led astray as long as I follow how I'm being guided, as long as I follow my inner guide, my divine guidance, my higher self, whatever you want to call it, God, universe, we all have different names for it. And I have like 27 names for it. Honestly, I interchange it all the time. Um, But choosing to follow that and choosing to have faith not only becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it gives you certainty in that moment. It gives you certainty when things aren't yet turning around right away. In fact, things got worse for me in the beginning. And isn't that starting to sound familiar? Isn't that starting to sound familiar to the initial time when I invested in myself and ended up on my grandma's couch, where most people would see that as a failure, but I saw that as some crazy, weird, up-leveling situation that I had to go through to learn lessons that were essential to my success. And people always ask me, I actually never shared this publicly, but I do share, I have shared in the past that January of 2018, January and February of 2018 were some of the hardest months of my entire life, um, at least in terms of this business and the, the, um, the lifetime of this business. And people always ask me, like, what happened in 2018 that you almost gave up? What happened in 2018? You always talk about how it was so hard, you almost gave up, blah, 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 and how Brennan actually convinced you not to give up. I credit Brennan so much for the fact that I'm still here. It's because I, for real, would have just been like, you know what? Not worth it because that's truly how I felt in that moment. And again, things didn't necessarily go from zero to 100 right away. They went from zero to 10 to five to three to 20 to 10 to 100. That's how it works. And so it was really tough in the beginning. And I had to have that complete trust and faith that even though I have no proof right now, things aren't getting better there is a breakthrough around the corner. And I choose to trust in that. A lot of people choose to to believe that 
things are going to get worse or it's not going to work out or blah, 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 blah. And the, the amount of limiting beliefs that come out of your mouth, you know, some people choose to trust in that and vice versa. It's similarly just a choice for you to trust in the universe and trust in yourself and trust that everything's going to happen for you. Um, and having an inner knowing, inner knowing that a limitless bank account comes from a limitless mind. And I talked about this in the beginning of the episode, but it's so true. A limitless mind comes from you investing in the intangible, the stuff that you can't see. It's not like you can see your mind. You don't really know because it's not like you're going to have a direct, it's not, there's nothing that, there's no amount of assessing that you can do to to figure out exactly how many dollars you put into your mindset equals how many dollars you got out of it. It just, it doesn't work like the stock market. That's because your mind is limitless. And the more that you feed it and the more money that you invest in into it by um, seeking out mentors, by seeking out courses, events, masterminds, peer groups, all of these things that help you think bigger and elevate yourself to see the world um, on a bigger scale and more expanded scale and expand your consciousness and see what's possible and give room for miracles to occur and give room for brilliant ideas to flow into your mind. The more that you do that, the more limitless your mind becomes. And a limitless mind equals a limitless life, a limitless bank account, limitless whatever the F you want. And most people don't understand. And I see so many people holding themselves back. They just don't, they, they, they know over and over again. I actually see this as a pattern with my courses. Every time I launch Rich Babe Academy or Manifestation Babe Academy, I've had people have been following me for years. And each round that I open up my academy, they commit to them. They, they tell me, Catherine, I'm signing up for the next round. My intuition's screaming at me. It's the right decision. I know it's going to lead to an up level. And right when they get to the, right when the cart opens and right when they're about to sign up, their ego kicks in. They see a clear yes or no, higher self says yes, ego says no, and they choose the path of their ego. They choose the path of no, they choose to silence their intuition, they choose to go the other way. And then life has this way of teaching them the exact same lesson where things didn't improve the next year when I opened up cart again. And again, they say, I will never do that again. I will follow my intuition. I will say yes. And yet they don't. And then there's those students who say yes. And even though it's so scary and like so uncertain, not necessarily scary, like it's not like we all feel this fear, but at least it's uncertain. And they say yes, they enroll into the academy. I take them through this journey of developing the kind of confidence that I have in the universe for them to develop that same confidence within themselves and the universe. And they're so grateful that they said yes. And because they said yes to that one decision, life just opened up to them on a so much grander scale, so much grander scale. And I see this all the time. It's not just in my life. I see it. I see this pattern come out through people, through my students, through you guys, through, um, people in my mastermind, through their stories, et cetera, et cetera. It's like this constant, constant pattern that the moment that you learn it and the moment you learn to have faith is the moment your life will change. Another way I was able to do it was um, James Wedmore actually always says that the transformation is in the transaction. And it's so true because we like to think that we can just Google our way through all this content and information and up love our life or that we can just read a book and our life will change or we can just, um, you know, find this information for free or someone can coach us for free and it'll have the exact same effect as investing money well. And for some reason, it never works that way. It's, it's perplexing, but it doesn't work that way. When you do something, when you get something for free, there is no transformation because there is no value. There is no pressure put on you. There is no fire lit under your ass. And so therefore, if you're barely committed, you will barely get results. And if you're committed on a higher level, you will get higher results. It's just how it works. Now, Having all of that in my head, how did it actually pay off? So in 2018, I'm proud to announce that even though it was a rough start, <laughs> Manifestation Babe tripled its revenue the following year. Not just doubled like I wanted it, but tripled. 
So it was actually more than triple. No, it was about triple. It was a $1.8 million a year. So going from 600K, because 600 is times three, $1.8 million a year. Um, I made connections beyond my wildest dreams. That's always something I value. I experienced my first multiple six, six uh, <laughs> first multiple six figure launch of 300K in March. So after going through this low period, two low periods, right? These two low periods of uh, January and February, guess what? March was my first multiple six-figure launch. That's because I didn't give up when it was hard. I didn't give up when it was uncertain. I knew that the breakthrough was right around the corner and most people don't stick with it long enough to ever see it. I found my dream team. I have my dream team today. They are the most amazing group of people. Um, we are finally a team of five again. I started Date with Destiny with um, a team of five and it condensed to a team of two. And now we're back in a team of five again. And it's the most aligned, beautiful people who are committed to the company, who have helped keep this company not only afloat while it's really, really sick, but also growing at the same time. Like that is a, such a rarity in itself to find a team that helps you grow it outside of you where you're not really present but yet the business still grows while you're in bed sick and can't get out of bed and can't think and can only work for no more than an hour a day, barely show up to team meetings, barely have energy to contribute anything to your team for a good solid six months, and they grow the business. That is where I, when I say you give up your old life in exchange for your new life, I had to give up my old team in exchange for my dream team. And even though it took three months and some longer, one of them we hired this year, Two of them we hired last year. It took a while to get here, but it's exactly what I want. And I cherish them and I'm so grateful for them. Um, everything just blew up for me. Um, even though I had a rough start again, it still blew up. And this is so similar to, as I said, my initial investment of Tony Robbins in 2015, where I ended up on my grandma's couch at first before I made the 600K a year. It's the same thing. Um, you know, this stuff isn't easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's simple to say yes, but I recognize that it's not always easy. And you have to have the mentality and the mindset to be able to do it over and over and over again. So the ultimate lesson that I learned is I listened to my intuition and had complete faith and took the necessary action. Most people have complete faith, but they don't take the necessary action. And it's so important, so important for you to actually take the inspired action. That's the missing piece, as I shared on the challenge last week, of what most people don't do when they apply the law of attraction. I just jumped all in and I invested in myself. And it was exactly this life lesson, you guys. There's no coincidence whatsoever why I created MBA shortly after I learned this life lesson. Um, I created an MBA in 2018, mid 2018. So when things really fucking skyrocketed for me and I understood, you know, exactly how I did it and exactly how I applied it. And I learned manifestation on a so much deeper level after this story that I share with you today, that it led me to create my four week program, Manifestation Babe Academy. And it's inside of Manifestation Babe Academy where I teach entrepreneurs, where I teach badass babes and women who know they're meant for more out of life to develop this similar, same kind of trust and faith in the universe that I had. And of course, there's so much more to it than that. But relating to this story, I think that the biggest thing my students take away from MBA is like, Catherine, there is nothing that holds me back anymore. There is nothing that holds me back. I believe it to my core that I am limitless and I can be, do, have whatever I want. And I believe in the inevitability of my success to such a degree that nothing, nothing can sway me off my path. And it's no coincidence that the results that come after MBA are the results that these women have been looking for pretty much their entire lives, right? It isn't until they develop this kind of trust, trust, faith, and certainty that they're actually able to create those results. And so, you know, with MBA opening, it's actually open right now as we're speaking, but with MBA opening this week, you know, maybe you are experiencing a phase in your life right now where something does need to change. Maybe you are experiencing a phase similar to where I was in December of 2017, where you're feeling like things are stagnant. Maybe you haven't brought in the kind of money 
that has been on your vision board for years now. Maybe you've been doing really well in business, but all of a sudden things are stagnating or things are not necessarily going in the right direction. And you're like, what the F is happening? It is your, it is a signal from your intuition that something needs to change. Something needs to change. You need to do something differently. Got to take some sort of risk. You got to deal with a little bit of uncertainty in exchange for more certainty in the future. And honestly, certainty just comes from within. And that's exactly what I share with you inside of MBA. Um, maybe you haven't been making manifestation actionable. Maybe you haven't been seeing big results in your life. I don't know what it is for you, but I know that it's no coincidence that the week I decide to share this story is the same week that Manifestation Babe Academy is open for enrollment. And so the doors are open and they actually close on Friday at, so at this time of this recording, May 3rd at 1159 PM. And if you've been on the fence, and I know there's so many of you have been on the fence for like years now, well, it hasn't been available for years, but maybe one year, and you just know that it's the right decision for you, I want to invite you to go to the page, manifestationbabeacademy.com, go ahead and read through it, go ahead and read the origin story, why I started it, what you're going to get out of it, what we're going to do together, go through the FAQ section, go through everything that you need to do in order to make your decision. Whoops, I need to put my phone on, do not disturb. And once you're done, just go ahead and sign yourself up. What are you not saying yes to? Where are you avoiding your intuition? Where are you allowing your fear to be greater than your certainty? Because your chance to experience your up level could be right now. And when you do decide to sign up for MBA, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to go ahead and announce it on social media. Announce it on your Insta stories. Go ahead and tag me because I want to congratulate you because I know it's such a big step. And I know that through the various different stages of investing in myself, MBA is nowhere near 170K. But whoever you are, wherever you are, I know that it's going to open something so much bigger in your life. And I want to celebrate you and I want to repost it to my story and do whatever I can to support you. And I want to bring you into that Facebook group that we have that's private for our MBA students only um, and make sure you feel as welcomed as possible and excited for your transformation. So go ahead and do that right now. Manifestationbabeacademy.com. Doors close in just five days or four days or whatever, how many days. Again, Friday, May 3rd at 1159 p.m. And you can find the link in my bio if you're on Instagram or just go to manifestationbabeacademy.com. I love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope it was a goodie. I hope you learned something, applied something, thought, man, if Catherine can do it, so can I. And what's holding me back? And that's what I want to keep asking you. And I want you to keep asking yourself, what is holding you back? And why are you still letting it hold you back? How many more years can go by in your life before you finally say yes to manifesting your reality wilder than your wildest dreams? And MBA is where I offer everything to you. I give you all of my tools. I give you all of my um, tips and tricks and techniques and hacks and ways of thinking and this and limiting belief reframes and um, stuff like hypnosis and stuff like meditations and all of this good stuff. Again, it's all written on the page for you. I don't want to just read the page to you right now via podcast. I'd rather share stories with you, but go ahead and read that page and see if it, see if it is for you. And when you're done, you know, I hope to see you inside and I hope to congratulate you and I hope to see your enrollment come through so that I can share it on my story and congratulate you. I love you guys so, so much. Have a fantastic week. If this episode resonated with you on any level, please go ahead and share it. Leave a review. I so appreciate your feedback. I so appreciate your thoughts. I so appreciate you sharing my podcast. It means so much to me and there's so much more coming your way, especially since I'm starting to feel better. I can't wait to pour even more into this podcast in the future. All right, you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. 
I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.